Jason Collins. All right. Uh, he and I came down here from uh, Canada to see if our folksy humor works in, uh, in California. So far, it doesn't. Uh, I will say that. I got booked uh, on a show last night. My name is Darcy, and I got booked on an all-female show because they thought I was a lady, and I showed up, and they were like, you're the opposite of what we want. I was like, I'm going to do five, and uh, they weren't that into it. Uh, they were not reciprocal to my vibes. I was like, meeting girls is hard. They're like, we know, we hate you. I was like, yeah, that's why. Uh, I'm uh, 24 years old and I am aging like a gypsy curse me. I don't know if you guys can see that so far. It was supposed to get better. They told me it was gonna get better. It didn't get better. Uh, I was always a heavy kid. Like I always had this romantic idea when I was younger. I was like, I'm gonna lose the weight. You know, I'm gonna turn things around, be real ugly duckling into a beautiful swan. And then my hair was like, goodbye. And I was like, I, ne I needed you for all of that. Like, I hit puberty when I was 12, but I've been 38 ever since. So, <laughs> you go to the school dance, and I'd be just walking around, and everyone's like, is that guy dressed as Beetlejuice? What's he doing here? <laughs> oh, if you're sad now, just wait. Uh, <laughs> my friends, like, my friends were all, they aged normally, gracefully even. Like, my friends, they all were great. They had beautiful boyish faces, and they had bodies like marble statues, and like, you know, they looked like statues. They had little leaves for dicks. And uh, <laughs> they were, to, to be crass, they were crushing, you know, something with a mortar and pestle, you know? They were like, they were alchemists. Uh, that one's not landing with everybody. Uh, they were doing so well, and I was like, how do I, how do I meet the girls? And they were like, stop making that with your mouth, for starters. <laughs> Women don't like that. So I'd go to the clubs with them, and I would be there, and they'd just be like, just about to establish a connection, man. You just gotta make eye contact. I'm just walking around staring. And it, I'd be looking at a girl, and she'd be looking back at me, and I'd be like, this is it. This is the Fiona to my Shrek. This is everything I've been wanting. I'm gonna take her back to my swamp. And she's like, why is my dad's friend here? <laughs> I, uh, as I said, I'm 24, uh, I lost. I lost something that it starts with a V uh, when I was 22. Uh, so <laughs> we're making up for a lot of lost time. Uh, but it's recently, I, mean, I don't want to get too crass here, plus people don't like to hear what sex sounds like when described by me. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to get into it, though. I don't feel comfortable requesting too much in the bedroom from girls. Now that I'm single and, I'm, I'm, and Tinder makes it real easy to fool people. And uh, <laughs> you can bamboozle a lot of people there. Uh, but it's tough for me because, like, I don't feel comfortable requesting too much in the bedroom. Like, my attitude's kind of just like, thanks for having me, you know? Like, I'm just, I'm happy to be involved. I'm just like, you guys need orange slices? Y'all good? No? Everybody's good? And secondly, my body looks like a peeled potato rolled across a barbershop floor. Like... <laughs> it's tough. It's tough to keep the mood going when I'm like, who likes starch, you know? like. <laughs> but uh, it's going pretty good. Uh, it's going all right. I was in a situation recently where I, uh, I, I had to engage in a, a thing that was very difficult. It was dirty talk, uh, which is it's hard for me. Dirty talk is not easy because you have to come up with like a really feasible, sexy sentence while at the same time like keep it all going, you know, like keep the mood going. So me and this lady are engaging in it, and she's real smart. And she goes, oh, read me my favorite passage from Henry David Thoreau. And I'm like, I gotta open a book. The leaves on the lot of money, what a crisp you! Like, <laughs> I'm sweating on the pages as I'm doing it. And things are going great with this girl. And I, I was like, just trying to reach in for it. Cause I was just like, it's never gotten this well before. So I started just pulling out. And I was like, Dog, you're a piece of shit. And she was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, you like that? Oh, last Sunday, that dinner you made was terrible. She's like, whoa, it's so naughty. I was like, your coworkers don't respect you at all. She's like, what did you just say? I was like, uh, do you need orange slices? I cut like eight oranges up. If you need it, I'll make you a sandwich. You're beautiful. Uh, a little while ago, uh, my mom gave me a call. She said, it's your dad. Uh, he's very sick. 
Uh, so you're probably going to have to come home and see him. So it turns out my dad had been diagnosed with cancer. And uh, uh, me and my dad never had a great relationship growing up. He never really got me. I never really got him. So uh, I had to go back to the hospital to see him. And I had to go back to the small town that I'm from in Canada. So I go back to see him, and I see my mom. And, you know, she, the moment I see her, she bursts into tears. And it was like, oh, my God, like, this is real. So I, I go into the intensive care unit to see him, and my dad has lost about 100 pounds, and he looks nothing like the man who raised me. And I realize this is going to be the last time I have a chance to talk to him. This is going to be the last conversation I have with my old man. So I sit down next to him, and I say, Dad, it's me. It's your son. And I just start opening up, and I say, I'm sorry I wasn't the son you wanted. And he takes my hand, and he starts telling me, he goes, I love you, and I'm so proud of you. And, and he tells me things that he's never been able to say, and stuff that we've always kind of like kept down between ourselves. And you know when you have a fight and you just push something down, we just start telling each other everything. He tells me about the boy he used to be before he had me, and I start telling him about the man I want to become. And we just tell each other everything. And just in that moment, there was no secrets left between us. And, um, and then he never died. <laughs> so it's awkward now, right? It's weird. All right, folks, you guys are an amazing audience. Uh, your next comic has appeared on At Midnight and The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. Folks, please get that.